Hello and welcome back to Greg's Game Room. Now today I have a special guest with me and his name is Nathan Barnett and he plays a character that you may know about on the internet uh, by the name of Keith Apicare. Now you may have seen Keith's documentary series called Talking Classics. Uh, hello, my name is Keith, my, hi, my name is Keith Apicare. I'm 28 years old and I'm from Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Or his music videos where he sings the praises of the Neo Geo and the Virtual Boy and the Ninja Turtles. I'm in love with the Ninja Turtles way more than with you, big girl. Now I would like to welcome Nathan Barnett onto the show. Whoa! <laughs> I was like, this will be easy. That wasn't easy. Oh no, I hope I didn't hurt whacked yourself, my man. head on that so I didn't get to do a good drop, but. <laughs> There's my gr big dramatic yeah, intro, entrance. The dramatic, <laughs> dramatic entrance from Nathan. Welcome to seeing me. Welcome to seeing you. <laughs> now, the first time I ever saw you was, no surprise, mm -hmm. on James Rolfe's uh -huh. uh, Christmas episode. A lot, a lot of people discovered me that way, and I'm yeah. glad people did. Thank you, James, and thank you for watching. Yes, I enjoyed that a lot. And for sticking around <laughs> and watching more of me. So you have an incredible talent for physical comedy. Now, do you feel like that's a lost art form? A little bit, yeah. I, I, well, yeah, I guess you... Definitely, actually, because um, you just don't see anyone. You see a few people doing it here and there. Kevin James is someone like who does a lot of physical, but like I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think anyone does the level of physical comedy that I would like to see. Like Buster Keaton was just death-defying. I don't think people should go out there risking their lives or anything necessarily, but if they're passionate about it and they can do it, why not? Like Jackie Chan, he does do physical comedy, but he's like an athlete like a like a you know a ninja basically but like then you know there's like standard little klutzy physical comedy type stuff charlie chaplin type stuff which you just never see anymore so i feel like you see either like high end almost martial arts and then nothing else right i would actually say wrestling in a way is physical comedy hmm. because they're being so physical and there is comedic moments in there and it's like sort of like physical comedy you know you're acting like you're getting hurt if you did the same thing in a wrestling match in a movie it would be funny you know what I mean? Like right. slamming someone through a table is either a cool action movie thing, but you could easily twist that into comedic. I yeah. think it's it's sort of gone. No yeah. one really does it anymore. I love it and I'll do it until I can't. Uh, how about we don't do a pitfall episode? So I think when I started, no one, no one really inspired me, but then as I started doing it, I started becoming aware. I was like, oh, I guess I do a lot of physical stuff in my videos. I'll add like a fall down a staircase or whatever. And then I became, I was like realizing I was like pretty good at it, but it was never really a thought until people started telling me I was a physical comedian. I was just being funny. It was just a way to yeah. be funny. It's like, you can look ugly, fall down or make a good joke. There's like three ways to make people laugh. And that was one that was easy for me to just throw myself around. It was an easy joke and it was easier than writing a clever <laughs> punchline. So I just threw it in as much as I could. And I guess I got kind of good at it. And it only really inspired me. But then as I did it, I found other people like Buster Keaton. Right. John Ritter was a big one for me. He was really, yeah, yeah. him. And like William, well, Robin Williams and stuff, like threw himself around a bit. But yeah, John Ritter, he was pretty physical. Yeah. Yeah. He And I know he used to plan out all his stuff. Do you plan your stuff out too? Some stuff. To some stuff is like very planned out and like it has to be very precise because like I like the way the body has to move will be funnier if I accent you know yeah. my butt out a little bit more. So stuff is almost like a dance, like it's a choreographed like precise thing. But other stuff, like I like to just kind of go and go crazy after like the tenth take. You're like, oh, it's actually funnier if I do this, and then. So then you just refine yeah, it. Yeah, so there's different versions of, of it, I guess, right. for different projects. Hijacking! I'm gonna hijack you! Oh yeah, free ride! <laughs> now I was watching a live stream that you were doing the other day, where I think you were exercise. You're playing this game where you're doing this exercise <laughs> ring thing. ring fit challenge. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. It's a switch game. Though. I caught something in that stream where you kind of discussed your philosophy on life i think have as much fun every second you can yeah like i used to just be so ignorant in a way or i was i was very positive and happy forever and i never really thought beyond that exact second but i never really thought about like in general life mm -hmm. and it ending i just didn't it wasn't even a thought that life would ever end then that's i think partly why i would just throw myself around and like I never yeah. broke bones. That was like totally. Keith broke my first bone. I jumped off like a fourteen foot ledge. Like it was like low as high as that. Oh wow! And I shattered my foot, my mm. heel instantly. My I would say I'm gonna be 119 years old. I think by 119 I'll be like, all right, I did enough. I'll go. <laughs> and then I was croak. But I just like want to do so much and have so much fun. I'm colorblind, 
So when I look at like bright colors, it's like really stimulating for me, like neon colors. I think it's part of why I video, like video games and like sound effects and stuff. I'm triggered but like just happy sounds and colors. My ex-girlfriend was one of my best friends who's like really into psychology. She's like, I think you're on like the spectrum in a way, like, a, like, a, like the autism spectrum is like a lot of people kind of like, you know, there's different types of it. But like, I'll look at the sky, the blue sky, and it makes me so happy. I, ha I can't physically contain it. So I have to like rub my hands really fast or just like, get, I'm like so pumped at how cool the sky looks. It sounds like a, I sound like a crazy person, but I have to let out this energy because I get so excited by that. That makes me think, oh, is that some form of like, I don't know, expressing this like positive energy you have. But I just get so happy looking at that that sometimes it's overwhelming how happy I'll get by listening to a song. That's why I do these dance videos because I like these songs so much and I have yeah. so much energy and I'm so pumped. I'm like, I love this song. I have to dance. Ah, I'll go dance, film a dance video for a week straight just dancing across Los Angeles. I don't know. I just want to have as much fun live, as possible. Li live life to the fullest. Every second. Okay. I wake up ready to go have fun yeah and i and i know it's not not everyone has that and it can be hard when you don't so i sympathize with people and i try to like hope well man if there's anything i can do maybe like seeing me another person be happy could make them happy well it does you know you know making people laugh is is a good way that's, to overcome I'm, that and that's what you do that's like all i can really offer because yeah. i'm not i can't teach anyone anything but i can fall if i can fall on my face and make people feel better i'll do it thank you It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So, getting into the dancing thing, you, you dance in your underwear. Um, <laughs> yeah. Does that, aren't you embarrassed to do that? No, it's, nothing embarrasses me. And it's partly because of that whole thing. It's like, well, I'm going to die someday. Why, what's the point of being embarrassed? Like, I'm never going to see those four people who looked at me on the street again. They're never going to remember who I am. I think that's a memory they'll have forever. Remember that guy 20 years ago was in his underwear in the store dancing? That was crazy. I like that naked cowboy or whatever in New York City. Yeah. People like that person. It's like, oh, that's the guy in his underwear. It's funny. But like, it's funnier, I think, for he's like in good shape. And you have like a scrawny guy who looks like a nerd in his underwear. You're like, what the heck am I looking at? It's like, you gotta take everyone to say taking pictures. So if you, I can insert myself by doing a bizarre thing in the middle of this normal moment, people will remember it. That's like what life is. It's like, you get bored. So I just want to like, yeah. Make it not boring. I do remember, it was about a year ago or so, you were doing like vlogs as this Riley character or whatever. Oh, yeah. You did say you were embarrassed. That, and it's it, it take, it's very rare that I get embarrassed, but the, and that was one of the times. I am <laughs> so genuinely embarrassed right now. Then I got over it. I got, after I did that video, I got back into my normal way of like, okay, I'm just hiding in a character. Like when I would do stuff as Keith, partly why I didn't feel embarrassed, though that was the other half, was because I, it's not technically me. I'm hiding right. behind this character. They don't know Nathan. They see this guy who looks, and often people don't know that I even exist. They know Keith or the other characters, and then they, they think that I really am Keith or whatever. So, but doing that Riley character yeah. in the mall, that embarrassed me because it was a character I'd never really done before. And the type of character was a person that's very, I get embarrassed seeing people like that in real life. Like the teens that are always like, hey, what's up? I'm really cool. And they're vlogging. The idea of vlogging and holding your camera on yourself and doing a selfie type thing embarrasses me for some reason. Because it's a very vain thing to assume these people want to look at me and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take pictures of myself and put it on the internet because they probably want it, right? The act of holding it on me to be like, look at me, hey, look at me. Okay, you like, it's weird. Keith is aloof, he doesn't know, he doesn't think he's cool, he's like, a, just a, doesn't really care about anything, but that character is like, I'm cool, what's up? And so these real people around me in the mall are looking at this like, oh, look at this egomaniac just talking about himself, trying to look cool, embarrasses me so much. So that's why that was really hard for me to do. How many pictures can you post of yourself? It's that type of mentality that that ch character has. Yeah. He's, but it, it, there's a sadness behind his too, where it's like, so that, cause that character is Logan Paul's cousin. And Logan right. Paul is this like hugely popular person who's kind of this annoying t type of personality on the internet. My character is the cousin of him that didn't get famous, that <laughs> desperately wants to get famous. So when you really watch the character after a while, it's more than just a guy. <laughs> and I'm not just making fun of young millennials. It's about this guy's like, 
this guy, then it cuts some shots of me in the bathroom and he's just like crying <laughs> because he just wants someone to that, watch him. <laughs> that one clip that you did where you're like, join my Instagram, join this, do this, do that. Do that. Oh, that was his the first, fun, his that first the video. Thing. That is like the best thing. That, that was what was happening at the time on, Inst- on YouTube. YouTube had five seconds of content. It was like a 60 second video and then you have two minutes of subscribe to me here. <laughs> Click on my annotation here. Go to my merch shop. Go to my Instagram, Snapchat. So I was like, I'm going to go extreme. I'm going to do yeah. a five second video and then a two minutes of promotion. So yeah, I was con- I was making a joke about that and the girl like slacks him, smacks him in the face. <laughs> the and then that is the whole thing. Anyways. Yeah. Hey, I'm gay. So can I kiss you? No, I have a boyfriend. Haha, <laughs> pranked you. I'm not gay. Uh-oh. You did the character Keith Apicary. Mm-hmm. There was a couple of videos that uh, you made and there was one name that would get Keith so worked up. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler. Oh man. Tell me about that. Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> I'm a fan of Dolph Ziggler. Uh, I'm a fan of wrestling. And at the time he had a YouTube show through WWE. So I had the idea, I was talking to my friend Justin who was the guy behind the camera. He's also, a, he's a director and a big wrestling fan. I was like, hey, we should film a video where I call out a wrestler. And my friend was like, you should call out Dolph Ziggler because he loves comedy and he's, he's getting into the comedy world. And he actually has a YouTube show. So yeah. maybe he'll respond. We're like, perfect, Dolph Ziggler is the one. So I called him out and he did. He responded in his WWE series on YouTube where he started, he just ripped on me at the end of this whole, he was like, it was basically like a Tosh type show, Tosh.0. Right. Dolph was commenting on internet videos. Then he called me, he answered, and we had this whole back and forth, and it still hasn't been resolved. And I plan, <laughs> I plan on resolving it because he and I wanted to have like a match, but WWE wouldn't let him do it. Then we had plans. I had a call with them, WWE, and all these people on how we could do something where he wouldn't have to, because it's like illegal for him to like make physical contact with me unless I'm under a WWE contract. You can't right. just wrestle a fan, you know? So we were, we came up with a way where we could have a match and we were going to do it. It never happened. I did two episodes and the third was going to be us fighting and it never happened. So I'm still coming for you, Dolph Ziggler. It's happened. It will happen. I think he's down to do it and I just got to make it happen. So if he ever like leaves WWE or something, yeah. then he's free to like slap me around. <laughs> we can have our match. He is tough enough. Wait, what the <laughs> But he's not strong, athletic, good looking, talented in any possible way, and he sure is all not me. So, you do a lot of different characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Keith. Y- yep. I love the favorite. Okay, I love, my favorite of all. Uh, that's my favorite of all. Mm-hmm. I love Dad. Dad's cool. Oh, he, the Dad character. Tell oh, yeah, me about yeah, the yeah. Dad character. What's going on with him? Uh, I don't know, honestly. Uh, I created this Dad character in 2017, and I stopped doing it. It was just, I was doing weird, goofy dances. It was short little dance videos as a guy named dad. It was like a dorky dad. And that's all I did. And then very recently, a whole entire YouTube channel came up about. Hmm. And I assume it's someone thought, this is like a dead character. This cha- this guy isn't very popular because my YouTube views were going down. My understanding is like, they thought my channel was dead and they're gonna get away with stealing this. They, they see something in this character and they're gonna go and do it. And apparently he was here this weekend yeah. and some girl I was just before we did this interview said she's like she saw him and she said we went up her and her friend went up to his face to look at it and he started doing this and was hiding his face really? from them and like left so it's like how was how was I not aware and how did I not see this guy last night and how are they what is going on like how, that what are they doing with his face to make just make him look just like me it's the most bizarre thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life but yeah they have a whole channel called dad feels and it's bizarre but some of the stuff's kind of cool, actually, because yeah. they do have a pretty good taste in music and the dance videos are pretty good and the songs are pretty good. So it does feel like it's very in line with what I would do, which is more frustrating because I'm not doing it. And he doesn't dance as good as Keith. Well, yeah, thank you. I think Keith is the best dancer on, on the planet. Dad is feeling good. Dad is can of food. Dad is feeling good. What about the Ray Amsley character? Are we going to see him again? Anytime? Ray will be back. And it's like, I have so many ideas and so many things I'm working on. It's like so hard like to do them all. I have a Ray Amsley short film that I could turn into a feature I want to shoot. But I didn't want to do Ray again until I took him to the next level. I wanted to, like, I did a lot of the internet videos and they're fun, but like how many times can I do it? Where it's kind of the same thing over and over. I want to make something that just looks like 
a movie with Ray because I think it would be funnier <laughs> putting him in a legitimate film like an action film like Taken or whatever the current action movies are oh, yeah. but the guy's got a wooden peg leg and he's an insane person <laughs> everyone else around him is very sane and very normal so you make, make the action hero a guy with a wooden peg leg <laughs> I think that'd be interesting and I wrote a, a 20 minute short film that would be like super slick and super nice looking but it would be a bunch of money to make look yeah. good so the other version is shoot it on VHS like the videos and just go really lo-fi, but it's like a 20 minute long Ray Amsley film. Rule number one, hide from murder. How the heck did you find me? So you're like the complete package. You you, you write it and you film it and you edit it. And yeah, you yeah. Release it, it you do it all. And then like I'll edit for a long time and I'm like, I can't sit anymore. So then, and I have these other videos to be shooting. So I'll get up and I'll go out and I'll film a video out in town, come back finish editing the next day edit that video i shot it's like constant but i don't do stuff like cg work and like effects but i have like a guy named joey who does like all the effects did he help you with that uh, clip where you got hit by the car which one well, Keith, i've been hit by the many virtual times. boy song where you got hit by the car no no that all the car hits have been real there's no effects on any of those sometimes there's a little speed ramp or something mm -hmm. to like have it time up with like a beat or in a music video or whatever or fit in a shot use large the Keith television pilot we did for Adult Swim, I jumped out a window and landed on the windshield. I wasn't, they were like, don't break the windshield. We can't pay for it. We don't have any more money. And I didn't mean to. I jumped out and I hit it and it broke. Another uh, video I did with Keith in a WWE training video, a friend of mine, and his name was Brody Stevens, he hit me with the car, my car, and I hit the windshield again and cracked it. And then there's a Ray Amsey video where you can see my head hit the windshield, the wig falls off. Many windshields I've landed on, <laughs> but there's no FX on that. That's all 100% real. What's the latest news on Milford? Ah, Milford is, the 15 minute version is done. I made two cuts. It's supposed to be a half an hour film, short right. film. Um, but I kn knowing the film festival circuit and how they operate the film festivals, I made a 15 minute cut of Milford to purposely just get into film festivals. And then after the film festivals run their course, I'm gonna release the 15 minute on the internet and then I'll put out the 30 minute. The version that I like the most is 30 minutes. That's the real film. But I made a version that works as 15 as well. So are you like this close to completing it? The 15 minutes done. 15 minutes 15 done. Minute is 30 done. minute is like that close. I'm having the audio mixed right now, but it's basically done. The audio is being mastered. So and now I gotta start editing. In January, I'm going to start on the 30-minute cut and just work, start working on that so it's ready to put out once the festivals all run their course early next year. Okay. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, I think our time is coming to a close. No. Well, sorry I, but, for the uh, long-winded answers. I, that's all right. Like I, I really appreciate you coming on and talking with me today. My it's pleasure. Honor to meet you and to talk to you and uh, I love all your characters that you do. Well, thank you very much. Thanks so, for watching. It's, it's really great. Make sure you check out Nathan Barnett's channel on YouTube and uh, there's some Dad Feels thing too. I'm yeah, sure I've been curious. Or not, I don't know. Look into the Dad Feels channel and tell me if you can figure anything out because yeah. I would like to know who the heck is behind it. It's blowing my mind. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for watching and have a great day, everybody. Bye. Bye. As I'm like answering, I'm always like, <laughs> All right, how am I going to wrap this one up? <laughs> I'm talking too much at this point.